you positive heads out there. Thanks for tuning your beautiful brainwaves into another episode of the Positive Head Podcast, where we are firmly convinced that creating success and happiness is rooted in understanding the ultimate nature of reality and the fact that as human beings, we are all immensely powerful fractals of the one and only source consciousness, which creates and animates all things. Now, of course, understanding this powerful truth is one thing. Applying this incredibly empowering wisdom to everyday life? Well, that's another. Which is exactly why we provide you with a fresh serving of soul food for thought five days a week to help constantly remind you of what matters most. You are it. And I'm your host, Brandon Beecham. I'm the reflection and extension of you who will be here each Wednesday interviewing a different consciousness change maker. And on the other four weekdays, leading the way to ensure that your perspective is consistently expanded, your vibration is constantly elevated, and your heart is overflowing and full. Also, this episode of the Positive Head Podcast is being brought to you thanks to the support of Gaia. If you're not familiar, Gaia is the go-to source for streaming consciousness content online, and you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out. All right, all you positive heads. Welcome, welcome. It is a terrific Tuesday as I record here in the studio. So grateful to be back here with you all again to explore and learn the greater mysteries, probe the greater mysteries. Today I'm going to do, I'm going to approach that uh, epic Uh, adventure uh, by reading from the book Oneness, the teachings that were received and transcribed by Arasha back in 1998. Um, And I've often said this is the guidebook for ascension, if you will. And um, yeah, I've been reading for for some time from the book, just choosing random chapters because you don't necessarily need to read it in order and seeing what's meant to come through that day by using a random number generator to see what, what, what message wants to be heard in the world uh, on this day and time space. Uh, Chapter 43 it is today, uh, and there's only 44, so this is going to be sort of towards the end, concluding, wrapping up. So it'll be interesting to see what message we have there. Before I jump into uh, reading and discussing chapter 43 of Oneness by Russia, I would like to, uh, a couple couple quick pieces of business. Uh, One is uh, some of you guys are wanting to uh, participate in the Purium transformation, the metabolic reset that many of us, I want to say over 75 people maybe now have participated in. I'd have to go look, but um, yeah, I, I of course being one of them and it's been such a, it is everything I dreamed it would be and hoped it would be I've, I've reset my relationship with food I you know I'm in the best shape I've been in probably in I don't know 15 years maybe ever I'm having superfoods every day in the easiest way um, and it's just been awesome so many wonderful success stories uh, have rolled in and so if you guys want to participate in that there's going to be another one starting on July 21st and we are basically um, the positive heads that want to participate we're mer- merging with the um, the Bliss Ohana Group, which is uh, run by Sarah Rhinelander, who uh, was on the very first webinar we did discussing, um, you know, how the transformation works, why it's so powerful, why it, you know, is the simplest and most profound way to uh, reestablish your relationship with food. And uh, yeah, you can. Some of you guys probably caught that uh, a month or so ago, but um, yeah, we're going to be we're going to be doing it again. So um, you can, if you want to participate in that, you can go to positivehead.com forward slash transformation and uh, you can see you know a webinar that goes into great detail you can hear the interview with david sandoval the founder founder of purium and um, also there's links to get uh you know the 10-day transformation or most people are doing the 40-day ultimate nutrition plan um which includes the 10-day transformation so uh, all up to you but i wanted to point you guys in the right direction for those who are are interested in going down the path that uh so many of us have uh are 
are glad that we did. Uh, and let's see, what other pieces of business here? Oh, reviews. Um, you can, uh, of course, review re- re- review on iTunes, and it makes me very happy. It helps us to reach new people. iTunes is still the holy grail of all things podcasting, but there's some some new platforms coming on the scene as well. Uh, Castbox is one of them. Uh, I highly recommend downloading the Castbox app. They're really working with podcasters and supporting the show, uh, which is great. I've never received any sort of support from a platform before, and I love what they're doing. Very smart. You know, founded by two uh, female Google execs originally, which I love. And um, yeah, so you can review over there. Highly recommend uh, downloading that app and following the show there. Uh, It's on Spotify now as well. Please follow there. Anywhere that you can, you know, uh, is helpful because that helps us to reach new people. But today's review, I'm actually going to read (laughs) two of them by Nurse Mello and Jude the Obscure. And Nurse Mello said, love you so, so much. Uh, I sent a comment a few weeks ago regarding something a guest had said. Judgment. You brought it up with Chris, and wow, I needed to hear this. It changed the way I look at others, and it feels so good and so right. Keep up your beautiful message, Brandon, as it is truth and it is kind. Thank you. Aw. Thank you, Nurse Mello, for um, being in a place where you're willing to look at yourself. You know, I I remember this, you sending um, something that was somewhat of a judgment that you're making about, um, about something a guest had said. And, and I sort of, uh, and and me and Chris discussed it. And um, now you're saying you're taking that information and you're course correcting and you, I mean, that takes humility. Humility is so powerful. Like to say, oh, wow. Okay. I see where I was uh, not expressing my greatest and grandest version of myself. And by, you know, I've said, said before, or your judgment amount of judgment is equal to your amount of ignorance as to the bigger picture and the bigger picture is everyone is right where they need to be right so when someone can understand and say wow i was being judgmental and um now i'm going to course correct that and thank you for helping me to do so that's growth that's when we're really getting it and what a powerful uh, example nurse mellow that you are being so i appreciate you so so much for taking the time to write in and review uh it means the world um Next one here is Jude the Obscure. Jude the Obscure says, happy as the title. And uh, I just found this podcast and I love it. I'm in a transition period in my life. And this is the perfect way for me to start my day and remind me what I truly believe. The intro song makes me happy. I love it when Brandon laughs to himself and the content is amazing. Thank you for all you do, Jude. Aw, thank you, Jude. Hey, Jude. Um, (laughs) I would sing the Beatles song if I could remember the lyrics, but um, I don't have the copyright for it. Although I can sing it. I'm pretty sure I could get away with that. Let me get back to you. Uh, Love you too, Jude. Thank you for all you do and for taking the time to complete the circle of love by reviewing here on iTunes. You made me laugh to myself there, and that's um, that's always a gift. Laughing is the ultimate gift, isn't it? It is the highest um, form of expression. I feel it. Like I was talking to someone about this the other day. You 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 release serotonin, you release um, all endorphins, you re- you know all the good stuff, uh, dopamine. It's just like it creates nothing but goodness. So. Let's not take ourselves so seriously. Let's laugh at ourselves as much as possible. Let's laugh uh, at, you know, enlightening, right? You're lightening up. You're, you're, that is enlightening, to laugh. And it's so easy to get caught up in all the heaviness of the world. But it all comes down to your perspective and how you're choosing, what you're choosing to focus on. Focus on the lightness. Focus on the joy. Be willing to laugh at yourself. That is a super powerful, powerful uh, way to, to enlighten into enlightenment probably my favorite path to enlightenment i literally started my today my day i did today i'm doing a lot of the todays and uh <laughs> repeating things today um i started with uh today actually watching some clips from borat you guys remember borat uh, sasha baron cohen um my son sent me like deleted scenes and clips and I just, it's one of my favorites. It's just, he's, he's my hero. I mean, literally like he just so funny. And so these were scenes that didn't make it into the cut of the movie, I guess all those years ago. And so that's how I started my day cracking up at like deleted Borat scenes. It's just, it puts you in a certain mood and a certain vibe that's so joyous and you know, it's just fun. So All right, let's dive in. Let's read chapter 43 of Oneness. Uh, The title of this chapter is 
Viewing ancient prophecy about the end times from a heightened perspective. Ooh, I like this. A lot of people talk about this sort of thing and the fear that, you know, the world is going to uh, go into hell in a handbasket. And, uh, you know, what about all the predictions of doom and destruction? And, you know, what's really going to happen? How can we ever make it to utopia when there's so much difficulty and pain in the world? So let's see what... uh, what oneness has to say here. Oh, and I will add, by the way, guys, my uh, show yesterday on the Aya journey, one of the things I f- failed to mention during my experience that I was having was really, uh, I thought of this book even during um, during my um, you know ayahuasca journey where I felt like I was choosing timelines and actually seeing different outcomes of timelines. It was really powerful. I, I remember being deep in it and thinking, oh, this is an example of what I've heard about and talked about and, and read about in, in that book where there will be times where you're seeing all the different outlines or timelines kind of play out and then you collapse into the one that you choose and want to live out. And so uh, that was pretty cool because I just read about that. I, I want to say within the last few weeks, one of the chapters I chose talked all about that. So you guys can go back. If you ever want to go back and search and find old episodes, by the way, you can go to positivehead.com, go to the podcast section. There's a search bar, type in keywords. Like if you were to type in oneness, all the old chapters that I've read from would come up. So uh, that's just something or any topic for that matter. You can uh, you can search and find you know keywords um, and just want to throw that out there. Chapter 43. There has been much wisdom and much speculation handed down throughout the ages with regard to the nature of the times now upon you. They have been referred to as the end times by sages since time immemorial. In reading this text, you may have come to consider that that label has been interpreted in a literal and a linear sense by many in your reality. And as such, much fear and mass hysteria has been triggered unnecessarily. It should be obvious to you that massive change is at hand. To resist that change and cling to an outmoded reality is surely not the answer for a world that is clearly growing in a conscious awareness. That is clearly growing in conscious awareness. For just as radical change has transpired within your own life circumstances and within the depths of your inner being, so too is the reality reflected by the collective consciousness at a product of that change. To expect that catastrophic events will victimize your world and reduce it to rubble is to cast a literal interpretation upon words with which basic truths may have been given. That is not, in fact, what has been foreseen for these times as you will experience them. For the collective mindset presently representing your reality is not of the resonance to reflect that outcome. There are other realms where... That is not the case. There are realities that are vastly denser variations on the theme that you regard as your world. In those realities, the environment that hosts and supports the life that experiences itself there is having a far more severe reaction to the universal upsurge in vibrational frequency. At those levels of experience, circumstances more in keeping with radical interpretations of end times prophecies are manifesting as reality. It was those diminished vibrational realms that were referenced by prophecies made so very long ago. It was anticipated that at those denser vibrational levels, more radical change was required in order to keep pace with the momentum of ascension that is being experienced at other levels of reality. You are not experiencing those conditions because your awareness is no longer focused at those levels. It is for you who have been made aware of the kinds of events predicted for these times to know that the changes in question need not carry the density that many of you have given them. The maintenance of physical life is not the consummate goal here. Rather, it is the vibrational elevation of all life in the environment that sustain it that in the environment that sustains it that is the objective in all that now transpires in and around you. Consider carefully the possibility that the beings in question have come to completion with the life's work of this present of this present incarnation and the highest possible expression of their collective de- destiny is in many cases to relinquish their physical forms. In so doing, they are able to transcend the limitation of those physical identities. In many cases, such beings have paid m- much of their karmic debt. And with the one And with the one great contribution of their very life, have earned their liberation from continued incarnation at levels that have kept them bound in the experience of oppression. 
The profound levels of release that are experienced as large populations of beings transition from such circumstances should not be underestimated. There are no accidents in your physical world. All has been carefully orchestrated. And even though there are circumstances and levels of human conditions of human condition which you may find horrifying, know that the individuals in question selected these very circumstances to illustrate to themselves the issues in which each was most profoundly invested at a soul level. Each volunteered to pay the price in terms of suffering in order to elevate themselves from the need to continue to experience incarnation at those levels. Once the lesson is manifested and the understandings gleaned, there is simply not the need to continue in incarnation simply because the physical form is still capable of sustaining life. Essentially, that lifetime is complete, whether it is one that terminates in infancy or in old age. Longevity is not the objective of a physical incarnation, but rather it is the fulfillment of one's life purpose. The catastrophic events that are being experienced by large segments of the population in remote areas of the globe are indicative of a mass release of energy that has been liberated from the need to continue to oppressive in oppressive conditions. Having experienced some of the horrors of those circumstances, these beings have transcended the need for much of the repetition of similar themes that might have been otherwise called for. They contracted for these conditions voluntarily, fully aware of aware of the price to be paid and the liberation to be attained as a result. Much that has been categorized as earth changes were scenarios that were orchestrated to provide just such opportunities. For in living living out some of the most insidious of these experiences, quantum leaps in consciousness are possible. And this is a choice made by many who will be riding the crest of some of those waves. There are other segments of your population that will be totally untouched by these kinds of circumstances. It is you, many of whom are tuned into the higher understandings, also being made available in mass in these times, who will transcend the need to be caught up in the grasp of any manifestation of environmental upheaval at all. Your earthquakes and tidal waves are transpiring within you, and the ravages of famine and disease are being experienced equally by you symbolically. You're not being asked to pay the supreme price of the relinquishing of your physical body in exchange for the lessons learned, as are some in other corners of your world. The price many of you have agreed to pay is far dearer than that. For you have dared to weather the virtual annihilation of an entire state of beingness that has kept you imprisoned in self-defeating patterns for lifetimes. The ravages of such an experience cannot be underestimated, and depending upon just how invested some of you were in maintaining the stance in question, that is the extent to which the energies of change have come to bear upon you. You entered into these agreements knowingly, fully aware of the trauma that would result when the time is at hand, but you were also fully aware of the possibility of transcendence that might be realized from having weathered those levels of upheaval. And you exercised your power of choice, and you prayed from the depths of your very soul to be permitted to go through exactly what you're going through for the chance that you might, at long last, be free of what has been your life pattern and taste what is truly there within you. The prophecies for these times of transformation are not something to be feared. They are possibilities to be embraced by those of you who are fortunate enough to be touched by the sacred energies that deliver them. They are the monumental turning points you yearn for as a soul. They are the gift of deliverance, the so-called end times, to which the intention of so many is now drawn is drawn is not an ending in the physical sense, so much as a transcendence of the limitations posed by linear perspective. The endings that may well transpire in the physical lives of many are not the objective of the events that may precipitate them. Rather, These endings are the doorway to another level of experience, whether or not in physical form. What is being brought to completion in this here and now are the intense patterns of karmic compensations that were enforced vibrationally in a system that was ongoing and essentially inescapable. By altering the vibrational basis through which that aspect of reality has perpetuated itself, beings are once more being given the possibility to exercise their free will and to live their lives fully in the now moment. By integrating the higher frequencies and elevating one's vibration, one is able to significantly expand the range of options for experiencing life at levels of reality where the conditions are less challenging. When viewed solely in the literal sense, it could be interpreted interpreted that the world is coming to an end. 
That might be how it would appear to those who have chosen to be present in such realities when those times are at hand. But most of you will no longer have your focus of awareness invested at those levels, and you will not even know that cataclysmic events are indeed occurring where you once were, for you will no longer be there to experience them. You will have ascended out of the ra- th- that range of reality, and you will be experiencing a higher vibrational variation on the theme of those prophesized events. From the perspective of the distant observer, some of the so-called guides that are filtering information through to many of you, the conditions being observed from afar appear to be transpiring according to schedule. For what has been prophesied is based solely on the logical, predictable outcome of combinations of variables, all of which are energy patterns. Those patterns can still be perceived from the vantage point of those who may be watching from a distance that is extraterrestrial and providing commentary, commentary on it. However, these forms of consciousness are only able to perceive the level of reality to which they are vibrationally aligned. What they may not be able to sense is what each of you actually perceives as your reality in any given moment, which is based solely on your vibrational state of beingness. Thus, the level of reality upon which otherworldly observers may be reporting is not necessarily the one you are likely to experience. Ancient prophecy is only as accurate as the moment in time in which the seer had the vision. From the perspective of certain moments in the past, the probability of certain events manifesting as reality seem likely. As the free will of the collective of consciousness present exercised its power to co-create its reality, that outcome may well have shifted in any of a number of ways. And the likelihood of certain prophecies actually occurring as envisioned is minimal at best. For mass consciousness has shifted, and the reality that is a reflection of it has shifted accordingly. Know that in these times of transformation, all things are possible. The script is being drafted anew based on your willingness to embrace the layers of change that are erupting within each of you. Life in the tumultuous period of history is defined by the degree to which each is able to detach from the need to try to control the process. Clinging to the safety nets of the past places an energetic death grip on your ability to float through the turbulent patches and harness the powerful currents that have come to carry you through. Those of you who have become become consumed with the worst case scenario predictions that are presently flooding your reality have created for yourself a fascinating test. For you have given yourself the option to choose to perceive the vision that once appeared in the mind's eye of another being. Or, alternatively, to experience a heightened expression of reality, custom made for your eyes only, that has not yet been revealed. The proverbial blind leap of faith presupposes that one is capable of ignoring what the logical mind is screaming about. For that logic is often based on fears firmly entrenched by painful experiences of the past. These times, that past and all the ground rules that went with it is quite possibly no longer relevant. Whether or not you choose to give credence to fear-based prophecies is certainly up to you. It is yet another of the fascinating variables you have chosen to factor into your script as part of your quote-unquote end-time saga. And watching yourself go through the mental gyrations of trying to figure it out can certainly be part of that experience. But there often comes a moment in the heat of your desperation when you call a time out. And you withdraw from the cyclone of illusion that swirls around you. And you find, after all, that drama... That the stillness within is still there waiting. It never left. You did. And you've scattered a mind-boggling trail of chaos behind you. So that when all else fails, as it inevitably does, you would find your way home. And that is the end of chapter 43. So um, this reminds me of what the amazing hostess with the Moses with the most is Alexa Hauser, who runs uh, Friday's Peahead Posse show. Uh she wrote something on the positive heads Facebook group, which by the way is positive heads with an S. Um, if you guys want to join, uh, definitely do that. There's a bunch of amazing P heads there, uh, connecting, sharing ideas, questions, thoughts. It's private. So you can open up about personal stuff if, you, if you'd like. And Alexa shared yesterday, something that, that that very end part made me think of how if focusing on something that's in the past, she said, um, 
I'll just read it here. So a few nights ago, my partner, his best friend from college, and I were talking about life, the nature of reality, consciousness, etc. And somehow we got to talking about the speed of light and how, you know, if you're looking in the night sky and you see a star from Earth, there's a potential that star has already died in space time. But the amount of time it takes the light to reach Earth means that we would still see it as burning brightly. Meaning, essentially, what we experience as our current now is actually the past, which made me realize that's what Abraham is always talking about with the vortex. Abraham says that we have created a new reality vibrationally that we cannot yet perceive with our physical senses, and that, quote unquote, now is actually old news. And so, the reason... or that is because of what I just referenced about the speed of light, which is also why things take time to evolve and manifest. But it gives more legitimate scientific proof to the idea that what we are witnessing as our reality right now is actually the past. And our true now is in vibrational form. We just haven't received the new light projection yet, aka the new download. Which also explains why there are people in this group, for example, who can see the future. Because it's not actually the future. It's now. We just haven't translated it to the light projection of reality yet, which is why Abraham Abraham is always telling us to ignore reality because it's old news. And if we could just ignore what is in front of us, we would have access to everything we want. I thought that was really brilliant. I absolutely love it. Well done, Alexa. And uh, it really uh, speaks to what what you know Rasha was just talking about here as well. I feel right. It's like you can either. Focus on what seems to be happening out there that you view as catastrophic or end times or whatever, or listen to these old stories of prophecies, or you can focus on the vortex, the, the now of, for me, I'm moving into a timeline where we make it through and create heaven on earth. It's already happened. It's done. I'm just watching it unfold on the light show projection that is my life and just enjoying the show. Uh, and I highly recommend you do the same and don't get caught up on past projections that have just appeared here. There's there's lag in 3D, right? Um, it's This goes along with the whole idea. If you want to know what you'll see tomorrow, look at what you're feeling and thinking today, right? So that's part of the thing with 3D reality. They say on the other side, it's much easier to um, to understand that you are the creator of your reality because you sort of think it and it instantly appears and manifests. And you're like, ah, okay, I can, I'm smart enough to see the correlation between I just thought of a donut and now one appeared in my hand. Although I don't know, maybe we eat spirit donuts, who knows? Um, <laughs> you get the point. So, but here there's lag in 3D. So I offered a vibration of whatever, pain, doubt, suffering a year ago and all of a sudden it manifested today. I'm not necessarily connecting the dots, right? You don't punish the dog for peeing on the floor, you know, 24 hours later. It's going to have no idea uh, the correlation between the what it did wrong and the punishment, right? Another way to look at it. So that's the thing. If we wise up and we can understand that everything that we're seeing now is a reflection of what we believed and have given energy to in the past, that gives you the tools to create and to determine what version of infinite timelines from this moment forward that you're hearing this broadcast that you vibrationally step into. It's your own private choice, your own private universe. You get to decide. So, um, I'd love to see you guys all there, and I'm pretty sure I will. We're on the same train, going in the same direction to the same new world that is heaven on earth. And so it is. Thank you guys for sharing and co-creating and holding that vision with me. We are doing it. I love you all so, so much. And I do have a song I'd like to leave you with. This is the amazing Head Flux, spelled H-E-D-F-L-U-X. This song is off uh, his album, Soul Science. That's what we were just talking about, right? Soul science. Using science to create what our soul wants to see. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And this one's called Sananga Serenade. I love it. Hope you do too. Until next time, journey well. Love you all. Also, if you're craving more consciousness elevating content, be sure to check out Gaia, which is my personal go-to source for streaming consciousness content on the web, where you can stream an incredible 7,000 plus exclusive videos covering 5,000 years of wisdom. As you all hear me constantly say, it's a daily conscious effort to maintain an elevated vibration. And if you're looking to journey deep down the rabbit hole to do so, then Gaia is the best place I know of to do it, period. 
And you can sign up for your first month for only 99 cents at Gaia.com forward slash positive head. That's spelled G-A-I-A dot com forward slash positive head. Check it out.